Hi, it's me, Denny Daniel, and I'm here with... Ben. Hannah. And they came all the way from, well, uh, two different places, uh, New York and uh, Boston. Uh, but down, now they're here in New York, and they saw the Museum of Interesting Things. They saw everything in the museum. It took, what, a week or two? Right, it took like a week or two. Uh, so they've been sleeping on the sofa. Uh, and now they're going to open up one of these three boxes that I have here, which Hannah conveniently noticed. One of them looks like it's got diapers. Uh, hopefully it doesn't, because uh, antique diapers would really be... <laughs> Shitty. No, hopefully I'm kidding. Unused. <laughs> unused, hopefully. No, that's the whole point. You know, old diaper. You know, I, I have a whole show on carrier pigeons. Mm. And we did it in, I believe, uh, Connecticut or Rhode Island. And my helper, who's this very sweet, nice, you know, Anglo blonde, brilliant boy who's very neat. And I had carrier pigeons in that show. And I had a pigeon cage. And it was from World War II. And he goes, ah, oh, Denny, you're ridiculous. You haven't cleaned this cage. There's like poop in here. There's like pigeon poop in here. I'm like, no, don't clean the pigeon poop. And he's like, you want the pigeon? I'm like, that's World War II pigeon poop. Where am I going to get world antique pigeon poop? You think you can't buy that on eBay? I said, keep the poop. And he goes, well, good point. And then he like put it in this special packaging and this bubble wrap. And I'm like, you bubble wrapped the pigeon poop. I said, I love you. You're the funniest guy I've ever seen. I said, your mother would be proud. <laughs> you bubble wrap the pigeon poop so it wouldn't be destroyed. Great. <laughs> anyway, hopefully there's no kid poop in here. Um, okay, so uh, I do this like a 42nd Street shell game, which I'm born and raised, and I remember the 42nd Street shell game. A guy showed up with three shells. He would put a quarter under one of the shells. He mixed them up, and you had to guess which one had the quarter, and you would win something. Uh, guys, the only difference here is I don't have three shelves, and there isn't a quarter under any of my boxes, and you win nothing. So ethically, it's exactly like a New York shell game, if you think about it, in Times Square. But there is one similarity. I am going to uh, mix the boxes. So here is me mixing the boxes. Are you guys confused? Very. Good, because otherwise we'd have to do this all week, and he has to go to school. <laughs> All right, so each one of you pick a box to open. Which one do you want to open? Uh, I'll go for the diaper box, I guess. Excellent. I'll go for the small one. Excellent. All right. Thanks. You're welcome. And we'll do the big one. I'll do the big one. We'll do it kind of together. So go ahead. Okay. The bottom of the box? Right? Mm, yeah, yeah, so you don't cut the label. Remember, whatever you do, don't cut him, don't cut me, and don't cut the cat. Cat? Oh, he's in Queens now. If you cut the cat, you'd have to throw that thing. <laughs> Far. But if you do cut him or yourself or me, I do have crack medical devices that I could cure you with. From the Civil War. <laughs> Oh, it's filmed. I don't even know Westinghouse that. Total Electric Sweepstakes Gold Medallion. Oh, wow. These are actually commercials oh. from Westinghouse of the most modern products that were modern in 1950. And if I recall correctly, and you're going to freak out, this is, this is going to be a holy grail item. When I show this, you're going to be like, you touched it before me. Um, these were items that... If I recall correctly, um, some of them you could even dial in, and it would um, and it would make the stuff. It was like a smart house, oh. so it was really cutting edge technology back then. This, these are part of my futurist show. I have a whole show on like futurism and everything. So this was like the future, but in 1950. Uh, but some of it was cutting edge for today. <laughs> I was very impressed. So these are really cool. That's like holy grail films. And you opened up something absolutely perfect for you. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was uh, for smart kids, which clearly he's a smart kid. You're taking finance. Uh, so you would have used this guy uh, to, to, as like your computer. It would, you'd, you had these cards that you put in here. And Alfie is an 80s, part of my 80s show. There are the cards. Oh. 
So this one I got Ice Cream Dream and Balloon. Is that Balloony? Balloony. Yeah. Balloony. Okay. Balloony. Uh, but it would like, you know, answer, you'd answer questions and you would ask or something like that. But it was, it was this, you know, cool toy from the 80s, uh, part of my 80s show. Um, and everybody on the 80s websites were like, I remember this as a kid. And I was like, I really don't remember Alfie that much. Um, and, you know, from my history, anything. I remember Edison cylinder players. <laughs> I wasn't alive for them, but, you know. Uh, but that's a really cool item. So I could totally see you. Everyone tends to open up something that kind of relates to them in some way. Um, so let's open this one together. Ah, it's another Alfie. <laughs> okay, so pull it out. All right. This one is in the original box. So this one comes with everything. Uh, this is the blue version of Alfie. <laughs> Ta-da! So all my 80s humans, you're like, wow, an Alfie. And this one comes with uh, a lot more of the pieces. Oh, very cool. So that's really cool. So the next time I do my 80s show, this is going to be one of the stars of that show. Because <laughs> uh, everyone seems to mention this thing. So. Very cool items. Yay. And that's my show. <laughs> so I hope you guys had fun. Uh, and I'm going to say bye to the world. Bye, world. Bye. <laughs>